topic is a single sex education, and if you don't know what that is, it's all boys schools or all girls schools. Many parents want to take their kids out of co-educational schools and put them into single schools that consist of a single sex, but other parents oppose this because according to Elizabeth Danish, and an author for Health Guidance, it will hurt their children's social skills with the opposite sex and it will not prepare them for the real world. I believe that students benefit from a single sex education because they are better prepared academically. There's different learning styles between boys and girls which are better addressed in single sex schools and those schools break down stereotypes. Results from the F FCAT Florida's Comprehensive Assessment Test, 75% of girls who went to a single education school scored proficient or higher versus 59% of girls from a co-educational school. And for boys, 85% from a single sex education scored proficient or higher versus 55% from a co-educational school. Christine Stanberry believes this, believes the reason for this is because with the school, in the co-educational school, there's competition, flirting, and sexual harassment with the other sex. There are different learning styles between boys and girls, which are better addressed in single-sex education. According to Karen Kaufman, some of the, a few of those types are in the environment, seeing, and hearing. Boys learn better in an environment where there's a lot of moving around and the temperature is cooler, around 69 degrees Fahrenheit, while girls have the opposite. They, they learn better in an environment where there's not a lot of moving and the temperature is warmer, warmer around 75 degrees. In seeing, boys are more attracted to moving objects, even so much that Karen Putman suggests that teachers should move around to keep their attention, and girls are attracted to texture and are taught better in circles where they're facing each other. With hearing, um, Kaufman suggests that teachers use a calm voice around girls and a more excited voice around boys. And all these things are better addressed in a single sex school, like for example with the temperatures, it's kind of hard to have a classroom that's both 69 degrees and 75 degrees. Single sex schools also break down stereotypes, and this is because the students are more encouraged to explore areas that I guess are not dominated by the other side. Like for example, boys are suggested to explore music and poetry, while girls are more encouraged to explore math and science. And even a study done by UCLA, um, a survey for their incoming freshmen, in terms of math confidence, 47.7% of girls from, the, from single sex schools were confident in their math skills versus 36.6% .6 of the girls from co-educational schools. In conclusion, um, students benefit more from co from single sex schools and co-educational schools because there are better academics, different learning styles are addressed, and stereotypes are broken down. All right, Kristen, I think that you had a clear statement of what your proposition was. In the opening, you had a quote that talked about uh, some of the problems that people have with having single-set schools, so that establishes a little bit of a controversy on that, and so I know why we're hearing this. 
you do have a preview of what the supporting points are going to be, uh, but there's no numerical signposts on them in the introduction, so unless people were listening carefully, they might not have realized that that is, in fact, going to be the structure of the speech. And you don't really do any numerical signposting during the speech. Now, I knew what they were because I was paying attention and I was listening to them. Remember, audiences are not always active listeners, and you want to help them be a little bit more active. So I, I wouldn't be shy if I were you about using some signposts and even using the numerical signposts on those things. I think it would help. But it was structured. I could pick out those points. I just think the labeling on it should be stronger. There's a pretty good explanation of the process on the first point and why things work a, a particular way. I do think some of the evidence that you present from the experts seems very conclusionary, and I think that you need to qualify those experts a little bit more and explain how they came to their... Uh, conclusions. The statistical evidence, although, is a lot more convincing when you have the uh, test results, for instance, uh, and or the measurement of their confidence levels. I thought that that was the stronger evidence that you presented. And on both sets of information, you did a pretty good job citing the sources, like I said, except for, I think, the qualifications sometimes on those experts that you're citing. And you want to be, uh, you, know, you want to you get more credibility for that, especially since you're relying on those people's opinions to be convinced on some of these ideas about how girls learn differently or guys learn differently or that you know, this ideal temperature is 69 degrees or 75 degrees. I, I need to be convinced on those points, and I, I think that uh, you're just relying on those experts, and unless I know who they are and why they're convincing, you're not really advancing that point as strongly as you could be. That was the that was basically the issue on the generalizations. Also, I think that that evidence needed to be a little bit stronger. The stuff about the results, I thought, was a little more practical. Pacing sometimes feels a little bit hesitant. Maybe it's some anxiety issues. Maybe it's just the you've got the notes and you're kind of focused on those notes. But I think you could be a little bit smoother while you're delivering. But you did a nice job trying to talk to the audience. I think. All right. Thank you. <laughs>